Creating fine art photography images out of normal photographs or even snapshots can be easily achieved using a few simple editing techniques. So let's dive in and see how you can take everyday images and turn them into works of art. So here's a shot I took of the Shard in London and this is just crying out for a fine art conversion. So the first thing we need to do is change this to a black and white profile and some basic adjustments to the exposure, turning things darker by around a stop, contrast up by plus 20, whites can come all the way up to plus 65 and a little more contrast in the blacks at negative 10. Also, to add more of a dreamy quality, which is suggestive of fine art quality photos, is to decrease the texture and clarity both to around negative 25. And that's the basic Lightroom adjustments completed, so let's send this file over to Photoshop to really enhance the look we're going for. Now, first things first, let's make a copy of the background layer for reference later. Now the clouds are the first thing we're going to eliminate from this image. So using the pen tool, I'm going to trace around the edge of the building and I'm not going to include any incidental detail like these antenna because this will just distract from the final result. Simplicity and clean lines all help to achieve this fine art look. And even this messy building in the background can go and we'll finish up the path along the bottom of the image. So now let's turn this path into a selection with a one pixel radius. And I'm also going to contract the selection by one pixel to make sure it's absolutely clean and sharp. And now let's invert the selection so the sky and not the buildings are what we're dealing with. And then save the selection to use in just a moment. We'll call it sky. And now we can deselect using command D. So it looks like we've done completely nothing at all. So let's create a blank new layer and head up to edit and fill and choose black as the contents. Now what I'm going to do is pop this black layer into its own group using command G. We can rename this BG. Now let's go back to the saved selection we just created called sky and load it onto the document. Now simply make a mask out of our sky selection. And boom, we now have a perfect black sky, which does look slightly unnatural, so let's address that. Add a new layer on top of the black layer, and with the brush tool set to white, make the tool nice and big around 4,000 pixels across. A nice soft edge, flow at 100%, and opacity, importantly, at 10%. All I'm going to do is a nice sweeping movement across the horizon line of the image, and perhaps a couple of dabs just behind the shard for a more haloing effect. Now, as you can see, we do have a slight banding issue, which you can see here, but this can be sorted if we turn this layer into a smart object and head up to filter and add noise. And if we set the noise level to about 50%, we can see Photoshop has just sorted that out. Although if you do still see some banding, it's probably my screen capture software and not Photoshop, as you'll see in the final result. So let's collapse the background group down, but the image still looks a little unnatural at this stage because the shard doesn't really have that three-dimensional quality. The right edge is just too bright, so let's create a blank new layer once again and make sure it's under the BG group because anything we now do to the image will only affect the buildings and not the sky. Take the brush tool set to black, we'll make it smaller. Also the opacity needs to come up to 100%. And all I'm going to do is dab at the base of the shard and using the shift key on the keyboard, dab once again at the top of the building along the right edge. And this creates a perfect line along that path. And already this is starting to look more three dimensional. So it's still using the same brush and layer, I'll decrease the flow to around 6% and gently start creating shadows and depth to the rest of the image below. Let's darken down the very bottom. Let's enhance the shape of the oval building on the left side here. And again, the less detail in the image, the more impact this fine art photograph will have in the final result. And that's looking pretty nice now. A quick before and after. That's great. Now the shard I feel needs some enhancing too. So creating a new curves adjustment layer, again under the BG group as before. I'll drag up the curve and invert the adjustment using Command-I. Let's rename this Dodge 
and taking the pen tool, we're going to be making isolated selections along straight edges. We'll start off with this edge here. Change the path to a selection, one pixel. Now if we hide the selection using Command H, we'll see more clearly what is happening. Make sure the mask is selected. And with a white brush, flow still at 6%, we can begin brightening along that perfect straight edge. Subtle but effective. And if it's not quite bright enough, we can push the curve even further. Now we can deselect using Command D and move on to another area of the building. Along this edge needs some enhancing, I feel. Repeating the same process, hiding the selection, and gently brightening along the edge of the glass. A quick before and after, maybe another edge down at the bottom. And you don't need to push these adjustments too far, just enough so we can define the edges. A little freehand dodging on this middle window. A quick before and after. Now for the burn. One more layer underneath the BG group and rename to burn. And I'm just gonna get this shadow line and darken down this area. Make the selection like before, and we can define that edge too. One final adjustment I'm going to make is a levels adjustment to add some more contrast to the very blackest parts of the image. And of course the white points as well. With this example of the vessel in New York City, I performed all of the usual basic adjustments, but leaving the image in color. Opened the image in Photoshop and made the background selection, leaving out some unneeded distractions. Next, I created a vibrant adjustment layer and desaturated. Created my black layer like before and grouped it to create the plain background. This time I used just a circle to create a halo effect behind both buildings. Now because the image is a little overexposed and flat for a fine art photo, I used the exposure adjustment layer to perform some gamma corrections and bring down the overall exposure a touch. Next up was the isolated dodge and burn process to bring some dimension to the building in the back. and then a global adjustment using levels to push the black and white points. Now you can see some pretty ugly selection work down here on the trees, so using the mask layer on the BG group, I just blended those in to make a nice soft transition. And I used a burn layer to darken down the foreground as well. And because I created this vibrance layer at the beginning of the process, I was able to bring back the famous brassy gold color of the vessel, which is a creative choice. Now I'm not sure which version I prefer, so I'll let you decide and let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. So following a few simple editing techniques like direction of light, light and shade, deep contrast, and the simplicity of removing unnecessary detail, we can take everyday images and turn them into works of art. So thanks for watching guys. Um, hope you liked the video. Give us a thumbs up if you did, and don't forget to subscribe with this little red button down here, and uh, I'll catch you next time.